Ladies and gentlemen, can you welcome Dockyard Doris. I'm ever so upset. I thought I'd come down to Brighton for a couple of days and upset. But it's Fergie, you see. She's upset me. She said to me, Granny, she said, I'm very worried about my body. <laughs> I said, what do you mean, Fergie? She said, well, she said, my, my bosoms aren't very big. What can I do? I said, well, there's plastic surgery. She said, I'm not bothered about that. She said, I said, uh, well, years ago in Brighton, well, Hove, actually, we used to... <laughs> no, we used to come down here and they had a marvellous thing called um, Isal. Isal toilet paper. It was very rough. It was before Andrex, before, you know, all that. And I said, if you rub Isal between your titties, it makes them big. So Fergie said to me, Granny, do you think it'll help me? I said, well, always something for your ass, dear, for a start. I said. <laughs> no. You see, the whole family, I can say it now because I'm amongst friends, but the whole family's peculiar. I said, Princess Anne, she lives in that Gatcombe Park, 42,000 acres with all the animals. Queen Mother was around there about, oh, about five, five weeks ago having a cup of tea. Little boy, Anne's youngest, young Mark, been watching all the animals in the farm. And they always say, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings. And he's only seven, and he came skipping to the kitchen. He said, Mummy! And Anne said, Yes, darling. He said, You know the big black bull in the bottom field? And Anne said, Yes, dear. He said, He just fucked the white cow. <laughs> The Queen Mother's top set flew right across the fucking room. <laughs> and took him by the ear hole. She took him out to the, to the kitchen, to the pantry. She said, don't you ever speak like that in front of your great-grandma again. He said, but mummy, it's nature. I don't give a fuck, said Anne. <laughs> well, she's been on trade fairs. <laughs> she says, when your great-grandma's here and something like that happens, you say, mummy, the big black bull has just surprised the white cow. Well, 15 minutes later, they pumped the Queen Mother's cushion up. <laughs> Give another cup of Earl Grey tea, horny man special. <laughs> Little boy came skipping into the kitchen again. Said, Mummy! Queen Mother's cup and sauce was going like the fucking clappers. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> and Anne said, Yes, dear. He said, you know the big black bull in the bottom field? And Anne said, yes, dear. He said, he's just surprised the white cow. Has he, said Anne. He said, yes, he's just fucked the brown one, which I think is <laughs> happy you think about it. I mean, cause the whole family's peculiar. When do you think no, please? <laughs> about a week ago, Her Majesty, was driving back from Goodwood Races with Fergie in the coach. Open Landau, like you get a Blackpool, you know, when you're being camp, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you've all done it, you know, you've all started thinking, fuck up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're sat there in the open land, and they get to Windsor Great Park. And it's a big park, Windsor Great Park, it's full of trees and bushes. And they get to this... <laughs> You've been there, have you, dear? <laughs> and they get to this bit where there's all these bushes hanging over the path. And all of a sudden, a jeep appears. And it's not been in the papers yet, but I can tell you as your friends. There were four men in this jeep with baraclava helmets, jungle greens, and big heavy boots. Got mm -hmm. the Vauxhall Tavern on a bad night. <laughs> They stopped the coach. They said to the Queen, Give us all your money! Got guns. She said, Oh! 
I don't carry any money on me. I'm the Queen. Oh, you, you know her, don't you, dear? <laughs> they said, well, give us all your jewellery then. Well, she said, all my jewellery is in the Tower of London. They made her and Fergie out of the coach. The poor Queen at the front with the white wig and the knee breeches on. They shot her, threw her body onto the floor, jumped into the coach, whipped the horses three times, and galloped off over the horizon. And there was the Queen and Fergie walking back to the palace. And Fergie said, that was a near one, ma'am. And the Queen said, yes, it was. And she said, but Fergie, weren't you wearing a string of pearls that was bought for you for your 21st birthday? And Fergie said, I was, ma'am. But when I realised they were hijackers, I ripped them off, shut them up with minge. <laughs> and the Queen said, but if we hadn't got Margaret with us, we could have saved the coachman as well. <laughs> I'm very upset because I'm sorry. One of my corgis has died. Oh. He wasn't one of these flash corgis you see round Brighton. <laughs> he wasn't sort of a, a real corgi, a, a, a creme de la creme corgi. He was a little English mongrel corgi from the East End. Black patch on one eye. No tail, no teeth. He wouldn't bite you, but he'd give you a nasty suck occasionally. <laughs> Deaf, castrated, answer to the name of Lucky. <laughs> no, it's all very well you being a dog. But being a deaf dog's no good, is it? Some bugger shouts din dins. You don't hear anything and don't get anything. <laughs> Someone said to me, Mom, get yourself down to Harrods. They've got a sale on. So I went to Harrods when they closed the shop one afternoon about half past five. I went to the pet department. Sorry. <laughs> and I bought this doggy deaf head for my little Lucky. £492 it cost me. I took it back to Clarence House. I strapped the batteries under his chest. I put the hearing aid in his ear. And ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in that doggy's life, it could hear. And it heard the dog next door barking. And his little stumps, because they don't have tails. <laughs> his little stump was going like the clappers. And it could hear the bees buzzing. And it could hear the birds singing. And it went running round the garden, and it went down to the bottom of the garden where the old oak tree is, cocked its leg up, pissed all over the batteries and blew its fucking head off. <laughs> I said, don't upset yourself. <laughs> no, you mustn't. Get yourself out and get another animal. So we went to another pet shop. And the sad thing is, it's a medical fact, one stutterer will start another stutterer off. And the geezer in the pet shop, he stuttered. And I was all in a quiver and I said, Good morning, sir. I'd like to buy an animal, please. He said, Certainly, madam. What do you fancy? I said, I said how much are the birds? He said, Well, the parrots. The, the ones on the top shelf are banned, and the ones on the bottom shelf are 50 pence. I said, well, why are the ones on the top shelf dealing than the ones on the bottom shelf? He said, that's simple, they're on higher purchase. <laughs> I said, but can they talk? And the bad said, I fucking a lot better than you can, Mrs. For a start, I did that now. But I'm very lucky. I've got my family. Even though the hat is. 
<laughs> even though the hat is falling off my head. No, no. I'm very lucky. Bless them. I went to Holland the other week. Lovely people, the Hollanders. <laughs> Queen Mother went there in a Rolls Royce. And in Holland, they have very narrow streets. We were driving down a little narrow street, and I was at the aide de camp. <laughs> aide de camp. Not aide de camp, thank you. <laughs> As the Queen Mother sat there, you know, waving. And then down the same street came this other Rolls Royce. And it was Queen Juliana of the Netherlands, Her Royal Highness. Queen Juliana of the Netherlands. And the car stopped about an inch away from each other. And the Dutch driver got out and said, Move back, please, quickly! And the English driver said, I'm sorry, I can't. And the Dutch driver said, Excuse me, move back, please! I have a VIP. And the English driver said, So have I. The Dutch driver said, I have Queen Juliana of the Netherlands in here. And the English driver opened the back door and said, what do you think? I've got a bag of fucking shit in the back here, dear. Now open the fucking door and move out of the way. See you again. Bye-bye.